James, thanks so much for joining us here. And uh, obviously the big topic in uh, the automobile industry today is autonomous cars. And when will they be on the streets? When are we going to see them in fleets? How is it going to progress? And uh, how far away are we? What can you tell us about Toyota's role and, and where all that stands? Well, I think one of the key factors to, to think about is when we talk about autonomous systems, we really have to think about when and under what conditions they're operating autonomously. When we're thinking about highway only or we're thinking about crowded urban areas, good weather, light traffic, we have a lot of the technology uh, more immediately deployable. But then we really think about in the long-term future where we can have a computer as a drop-in replacement for a human driver, that's still quite a ways off. And the honest answer is we don't know exactly when that will happen, but there's right now an incredible excitement and investment and convergence of technology and people working on this problem together to try and uh, make uh, that future a reality. Well, you're in Silicon Valley, and there's a lot of technology companies, not automotive companies, that are getting into that space. So it's very competitive, and uh, I mean, you're keeping your eyes around you to see who else is doing it and how far they're getting? Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, the reality is, is that cars are moving beyond just me mechanical systems. They're really integrated software and hardware, and the complexity of software that you need to create an autonomous system is truly of a different order of magnitude, and I think that's really... Uh, what the difference is and that's why you're seeing giant IT firms make investments who are skilled at software and the Toyota Research Institute is really to help complement the hardware and manufacturing strengths of Toyota uh, and, and build great software so together great hardware great software we can build the next generation of intelligent vehicles. Are you buying or developing like the LIDARs, the radars and all the equipment that's needed to, to make a self-driving car? Toyota Research Institute specifically is really building the software, but we're working with lots of partners, lots of startups. We're exploring all kinds of new sensors and devices that could make the system capable. What we're really trying to do is build uh, capability, reliability, and then think about cost. So make it work, make it work well, make it work cheap in that order. Okay, now in today's cars, we have lane departure, we've got warnings if you're too close to the car in front of you. I mean, there's all kinds of mechanisms that would be applicable, I guess, in a car without a driver that is really helping today's driver stay sharp, not back into people, not kill pedestrians and so on. So today's driver cars are uh, getting this technology now. It's, uh, you're absolutely right. And in fact, uh, you know, 2017, if you buy a Toyota in the United States, uh, almost all make and models will come standard with automatic emergency braking and forward collision warning systems, which have statistically shown to dramatically reduce rear end collisions. And those are going to save lives, they're going to prevent injuries, and really just uh, make transportation safe and accessible for all. And that's what our job is. We see our mission uh, is to provide safe, accessible transportation to everyone. And as this technology develops, uh, the cars will get smarter and better and better and keep us safe. Let's go from mission to vision. So the vision uh, would be that, uh, say, an Uber-style system where you, on your phone you uh, order a car and you're going to get it without a driver at some point. Uh, and maybe that's the way it's going to go in some kind of a, a taxi-type, uh, you know, mass transit-type system with uh, you don't own the car, but you just call a car and it shows up without a driver and takes you where you want to go. How far away are we from that? Well, I think we're going to start to see uh, a blend of these systems being introduced gradually. And in many ways, mobility as a service or ride sharing type of systems are the ideal complement to this technology because initially the utilization of the vehicle needs to be high in order to justify the cost of the compute and the sensors. And so in, in a ride sharing or mobility as a service application, you can have a hybrid fleet of human driven and computer driven cars. So when the weather's good, the traffic is light, you can dispatch a computer, whereas when the traffic is terrible, the weather is bad, you have a human driver. So because there's a beautiful uh, sort of complement of the, that hybrid fleet of, of human and, and computer-driven cars, uh, we think this technology is going to be uh, rolled out earliest in that mobility-as-a-service genre. Okay, you're kind of telling me that weather is a big factor in the progression of developing autonomous cars. Is that true? 
Absolutely. I mean, uh, the reality is is that we're going to expect uh, mobility services, and you know, people are going to have to get point to point and place to place, uh, even in inclement weather. Uh, right now, uh, you know, humans uh, are capable of driving uh, in fairly uh, difficult weather conditions, whereas our, our computer systems are not there yet. But we're working hard with a lot of academic partners and researchers to try and see if we can improve the capability of those systems. But we're not there yet. All right, James. Is there a current model of a Toyota? that you're working with or are you creating a whole new model for the autonomous project? So we have built several research vehicles that we're using as testbed platforms. In fact, uh, last month uh, we announced and unveiled our latest generation. It's a modified Lexus platform. Uh, it's actually a very smooth ride, uh, fully fully decked out. But uh, we're, we, as with a lot of other Toyota systems, you'll see them at the higher end models and then gradually uh, be deployed out to the entire fleet of 10 million cars that Toyota produces every year. Right. Can I just pound you one more time? Give me a year, give me a kind of how far away are we from seeing everybody in these uh, autonomous cars? I, I, I can't uh, reveal exactly the date uh, because when we say a date we really want to be able to stick to it but uh, you know I hope in my lifetime uh, let's just put it that way. About 5, 10, 15 years? Or? Uh, again it really is about you know we're gonna see it today for certain constrained situations, but you know, a true replacement for a human driver is going to take a lot longer.